Welcome to the Market Mindset. We are the hub for news, results, and CEO interviews focusing in the junior commodities sector. We provide market analysis and perspective that will help position you for solid returns. If that sounds like something you're interested in, you can help support us by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and clicking the notification bell. For more info, you can visit our website. All links are in the description below. Now let's get into today's video. So when you look at us, you're looking at the bottoms up, and then you're looking at the gigafactory guys and the out of money, um, auto manufacturers like the bot bottoms, the tops down. So we're kind of meeting them halfway. So look, this is a, you know first phosphate in what we call the ESG driven LFP battery ecosystem for North America. So you know you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pillars of it, starting from you know uh, taking phosphate material out of the mine. And then ending up with a battery with a, uh, a car and then eventually, you know, recycling, obviously. So if you look at the blue area, that's the blue for first phosphate. That's where we want to be. OK. And once we're done doing that, then we're going to pass it over to the battery guys who we'll pass it over to the, the, uh, the car makers and then who eventually will, you know, will recycle it. So what we're looking to do is, you know, we're going to extract phosphate from the ground at about uh, five to 10 percent. And then at the same mindset, we beneficiate that, meaning we concentrate it up to about what's called 40, 40 to 41% appetite. Appetite being the mineral in which phosphate is found. The theoretical maximum ultimate purity would be 42% uh, phosphate. So we get pretty damn close at 40 to 41%. To give you a frame of reference, you know, uh, the standard typical uh, you know, Moroccan rock phosphate, which is sort of the, the dominant one on the international market, um, that's usually beneficiated up to around 30%. So you know, we're much higher, we're, we're, we have you know, less trace elements, and we are able to create, you know, a large number, large amount of purified phosphoric acid from a much smaller mining stock, which is great. We don't need a huge mine. We don't need massive capex. So we choose a smaller mine. We choose to be close to infrastructure, and we choose to be value-added players, right? As opposed to selling a bunch of beneficiated uh, rock phosphate on the open market without adding adding value, we would rather have less of it purified up the purified phosphoric acid. Get the purified phosphoric acid, like we were saying, with, through our relationship with Prayon, doing um, doing uh, the the purification either at the port of Saguenay or in Belgium, and then taking that uh, purified phosphoric acid. Uh, there's you blend it kind of with with iron, iron sulfate, and with lithium hydroxide, and then you get the LFP cathode active material. Once you get to there, that's kind of really the holy grail. That's where the you know the really big value add has been created. There's a big value add jump from beneficiation to purified phosphoric acid. But then there's a massive value jump from purified phosphoric acid to LFP cathode active material. And then that LFP cathode active material then goes into the battery cells, the battery packs and the EVs. You know, when we're talking about, you know, the, the, the Ford and C, uh, CATL deal, that's kind of sits somewhere, you know, around in here, right? Uh, battery cells, battery packs kind of in here, right? But it still doesn't take into account the LFP cathode active material, right? Um, and then you've got, you know, some other great players out there like Nano One and some other companies in North America that are really looking to build, um, you know, technology around creating LFP cathode active material. There's a traditional uh, methodology out there, the Chinese methodology, um, also known as a solid state uh, methodology. But, uh, you know, some of the more forward looking companies such as Nano Ones and others are looking to develop, you know, a more hydrothermal method where you can control inputs and we can get a you know, much higher quality. Right. So that's kind of, you know, where, where we would be at, where we're sort of right here. Then we kind of stop here and then it gets passed on. And, it can, you know, once it's in LFP cathode active material, it's no longer in, in liquid state. You, you've kind of solved the very hard part. And then basically it can be delivered anywhere into North America where they're assembling the, these batteries and eventually the, the, these cars. I think most people are seeing along with this, uh, so many changes happening. It's going to be important how someone got their their minerals, their elements, their 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 mind, where it came from, how it was made, you know, maybe possibly have an ESG score, but all of these things are going to be critical moving forward, uh, whether it's a carbon score or or whatnot. That having it in a good safe jurisdiction that uh, you know has a, has a, a good reputation, but also has followed very strong ESG guidelines, that that's going to be a very big positive. Yeah, though, I'm glad you bring that up, Andrew, because that's really the question of the day. So, you know, what happens here is, you know, 
ethical supply is a big issue, right? So you want to know that it came from a place that, you know, ethically is sound. Um, then the other thing is that you want to know, you want to make sure it's on the ESG scale. So that's what we're doing. It's, it's all ESG. Uh, carbon footprint, we're, we're, we're controlling the carbon footprint um, in all our processes. Um, then the other thing you want to make sure that, you know, it's obviously it's traceable. Um, you want to make sure that it's constant and secure. Now, constant and secure are big words. What does that mean? Now, when we've heard about, you know, auto manufacturing in the past, you know, we've all heard of a phrase called just in time. Now, what is just in time? It was invented, you know, in, in Japan, I believe in the 1970s, 1980s. And what that means is that, you know, the auto manufacturers don't carry too much inventory and all their supplies are, arrive at the factory just in time, kind of all at the same time. And they go into the, into the vehicle and, you know, it, it, it's really a, a logistical feat to get your, 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 your whole system up to that level of, 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 of production, of performance. So, you know, when, when we do this here um, in, with first phosphate, that's what we want to run. We want to be able to plug right into the manufacturing processes of the auto manufacturers, right into the just-in-time uh, uh, systems. Now, in order to do that, do you think you can be a fertilizer company that specializes 90% in fertilizer and is just doing this 10% LFP thing on the side just to make a couple of bucks? You know, yeah, you can do it. And I don't mean to put anybody down, but, you know, our focus here at First Phosphate is really, you know, the technology client down here, downstream. We're focused 100% on them, whatever they need, however they need it. If they ever need a tweak to the way the material is done, if they need to, you know, for us to look at something. Um, and, you know, the other big word is homologation, right? There's a, there's a massive process before they can start using this in the batteries. And we want to work on all those processes so where they can say, you know what, this is stamped. This is, this is secure. We use first phosphate phosphate because we know it's the right thing. So that that's where we're going with it. You know, a real specialized focus on the downstream clients. And listen, I, I'll, I'll keep talking your ears off because there's going to be more questions down the line, but maybe we can focus on short term. Uh, so people that are excited and have more questions, what are a couple of the short term uh, metrics they could kind of hold you to? Because uh, I always find that's a, a great kind of way to keep a scorecard to say, is management doing what they're saying they're going to do? Um, what are some things in the next shorter term that people should kind of look, look for to see if, if, if you guys are on track? Well, you, you know, as you know, we have, we have uh, numerous um, phosphate showings and claims in, in areas in, inside the Lac Saint-Jean, uh, Saguenay Lac Saint-Jean area of Quebec. There's about 12 to 14 areas. Um, so you're going to see our, our main area, which is the uh, Lac Alorignel, where we have a 43-101 already with 49 million tons in the ground. We're going to be moving that into P PEA here very shortly. Um, also, we're going to continue drilling on another area that we know is, you know, is really surprised us, which is Beijing La Marche with some very high values of, of phosphate. We're going to be drilling there. Um, you know, on the beneficiation side, now that we have the agreement with Preon, what you can see us doing is, you know, developing a pilot plant here at the beneficiation side so that then we can, you know, have enough phosphate to start, you know, developing some samples, some samples of phosphoric acid, which then can be, you know, worked in with, you know, iron sulfate and lithium. Uh, on our own or with with partners, so you'll see us develop some of those partnerships as well, bringing that process together to be able to make you know our first batch of LFP cathode active material and perhaps even a, you know a small little sample battery cell. Like that's very very important stuff in, in this whole system. So now we finally have all the pieces to be able to complete that. It takes time, but you know you can see that coming from us uh, very shortly. You'll see us looking at you know some uh, producers of LFP cathode active material. Some some people with some systems and some processes. You know, the beauty, what we have, Andrew, is we're not committed to one LFP cathode active material manufacturing process. We can look at all of them. We can look, you can work with one person. We can work with three, four, five. It doesn't really matter. We could have three or four, you know, uh, production runs going all with different processes, right? For different needs um, and, and to, to mitigate our risk. So you're, you're gonna see us starting to work in, in, in this sector here as well.